Welcome back. I'm Shane. This is Relative Time. And today we're going to take a look at another watch from Proxima's Omni Online. This is the OM16, a watch with a very transparent dial. And if you're looking at it or maybe through it and you're thinking this looks vaguely familiar, you're absolutely right. As I'm sure on some level, this was inspired by the Sapphire line from Christopher Ward. Although the dial here is a plastic polymer and not Sapphire like on the Christopher Ward. But here, it also comes with a more affordable price. And this is actually the reason I agreed to do this review. They asked, and I was curious how close a polymer could come to replicating that effect. Although, whether or not you want to call this particular watch an homage is up to you. There are definitely some similarities here with the dial. But this is more of a sports watch, not a diver, with a completely different case and handset. So for me, while this is definitely inspired, I think it is a watch that can stand on its own. Now, before we get into this one, do be aware that this watch was provided by Proxima. And as far as I know, they aren't asking for it back, hence the promotional tag at the beginning. Now, with that out of the way, let's talk specs. For this one, we're looking at a 42 millimeter wide case with a lug to lug of 49.5, which is a little bit longer than I personally prefer, but overall it is still manageable. Total thickness is 13 millimeters, and that does include an exhibition case back, as well as a flat sapphire with AR, while water resistance is 200 meters, including a screw down crown. Lug width is 20 millimeters, and it weighs in about 96 grams with its blue nylon strap, as well as it's all powered by PT5000 or an SW200 movement. Your choice. This is actually the second Omnion watch I've looked at from Proxima, and compared to the other, this one definitely has more of a sports watch vibe which is partially thanks to its Seiko-like case combined with a clean polished bezel. Then you also have this unusual see-through polymer dial, giving you a glimpse of the gilted movement underneath, as well as acting as a base for the applied indices, a raised chapter ring, and an interesting handset. So let's start things off with a couple of negatives, the things I didn't like here, and then we'll move on to the positives. So first off, we might as well talk about the branding, which is something I talked about in that other review. Omnion is a new sub-brand of Proxima, and believe it or not, that is actually what it says on the dial. It's just that the M here has been modified into this sideways two weird looking thing. Honestly, I really don't understand it, and that's kind of been the problem all along. As I mentioned in the last review, this stylistic logo combined with the unusual design on the case spec makes it seem like there's an interesting story here behind that name. But the problem is that I have no idea what that is. In general, it's just really confusing. A little bit of mystery can be good, but outright confusion is bad. Although, as Proxima releases more watches in this lineup, maybe all of this will make more sense. So far, it just seems like a catch-all for their more unusual designs. The other negative here is the finishing on the case. The finish is almost entirely polished, which for me is not ideal for a sports watch. As all these polished angles, as well as the polished bezel, will attract smudges as well as micro scratches over time. For me, a nice balance between polished and brushed is ideal. But as it is right now, there are only two exceptions to that polished finish. You have a thin polished section on the top of the bezel, which does frame in the dial nicely, as well as this long thin sliver that runs the length of the case. Now, beyond those style implications, there are a couple of sharper edges on this thing, and that's actually the bigger problem. In particular, you have the top of the case right where the polish meets that brushed angle. There's an edge to it, and it is fairly noticeable when you pick it up, as is the edge on the bottom of the lugs. It is a good looking case, so I don't want them to change it completely, but maybe there's something they can do to soften that. That said, let's move on to what I do like here. And to start with, it's really well made. And I think this is very apparent when you zoom in with these macro shots. It's pretty obvious that Proxima did a great job executing this design. Everything is well defined and comes through clearly. The indices are particularly impressive, with angled polished sides that catch the light adding to the depth and mystery of the design. I also really like what they did with the handset where they combined a polished angled edge to a brush top and then filled in a little bit of that with white luminous paint. Other brands would have just gone with a boring flat brushed handset, but Proxima created something interesting here that clearly stands on its own against that chaotic backdrop. When Proxima first contacted me about this watch, they sent me a bunch of pictures of things they were proud of. 
including this shot of the movement holder. Typically, a movement holder isn't something you'd think about when you're talking about a watch. But because they did mention it, I did look for it on the finished product. In flipping the watch over, you can see it subtly behind the text on the case back. And it adds just a hint of glimmer to that text. It's a minor thing, but again, it's a nice touch that helps an aspect of the watch stand out. And perhaps that's what I really appreciate about the OM16. That even though it's a $220 watch, Proxima still paid attention to a lot of the finer details. Which is something they've gained a reputation for. Oftentimes their designs are a little different, a little unusual, but still well made at an affordable price. And I think that's a good way of describing the OM16. Now, with that said, let's move on to what I just found okay here. And this is more of a nitpicking section. Like the strap, for instance. The strap the watch came with is this blue nylon, and it's pretty much the same strap that came with the last Omnion. And I also have pretty much the same comments as that one. That there's nothing really wrong with it, but there's also nothing really right with it. I think it's a strap that you'll try on a few times and then just swap it to something more comfortable as well as more interesting. Then we have the movement, with the one they sent me having a Chinese-made PT5000. But if you do want to spend a little bit more, you can get a Swiss Lita SW200. Both of which are clones of the ETA 2824, so in terms of specs, they are equivalent. Now, if the prices were the same, I think in general everyone would prefer a Swiss Lita SW200. But over the last few years, the Chinese-made PT5000 has grown in popularity, and especially among Chinese watch fans. Because in terms of specs or performance for the price, it's really hard to argue against it. And especially the one they sent me. I mean, this thing is spot on. Most people I've heard from have positive experiences with the PT5000. But every once in a while, I do hear from someone who got a dud. Which, in a lot of ways, also mirrors people's experiences with Ollie watches in general. And that's just something you have to be aware of as the consumer, that there is a little bit more of a risk or maybe a potential headache with it. Wearability is also just okay. On my seven and a quarter inch wrist, the lug to lug felt a little long, and I think it did result in a little bit of overhang. Nothing horrible though. Overall, it's still very manageable and perhaps comfortable if you have a larger wrist. Although, since this is more of a sports watch than a diver, I do feel that they should have gone a tad smaller here. Perhaps followed the Seiko with their Dress KX line and gone with a 40, rather than 42. As for the loom, it is a bit of a mixed bag. With the dial, Proxima did a great job, with the loom there outlasting that of a Seiko diver. Yet the hands are a whole other story. They're about as good as a Vostok, which is to say they're just okay. Now, considering this is a sports watch, not a diver, I'd say it's overall acceptable, if not good. But it is always a little bit frustrating when you know a brand has the ability to do better, like they did with the dial, yet they didn't quite follow through the entire way. And lastly, let's talk about that see-through design. And this is something I've had a little bit of experience with with that recent Christopher Ward review. From that, I know the concept can be a bit polarizing. And I think my personal opinion has stayed consistent between these two. For me personally, I was curious, and I really wanted to check one out. Yet, while I initially found the idea intriguing, over time I also found that it wasn't particularly engaging. So here, just like with the Christopher Ward, once you take all of this in, that's kind of it. It's all fairly static, and once again I find myself asking if there's really a point to a transparent dial. For me, this would make much more sense with, say, a skeletonized movement, where you might actually be able to see something continuously, rather than just staring at static metal and maybe occasionally seeing the date change. Now, that said, from that previous review, I also know there are plenty of people out there who love this idea, and Christopher Ward has plenty of happy customers with their Sapphire line. So design is always a bit subjective, with this particular watch being a bit polarizing. And perhaps this is one type of watch that you really won't know how you feel about until you actually have it in your hand. Which perhaps is really where the true strength of this Omnion comes into play. In many ways, this sports watch is a tad odd, confusing, as well as polarizing. But at the same time, it's interesting and really well done, at least for the price. So for myself, just like with that Christopher Ward, this is one that I'm glad I got to experience, but I don't think it's necessarily going to be a keeper. 
and I think that's going to be true for many of you out there as well, but not necessarily everyone. So if a transparent dial is something you're curious about, but maybe not curious enough to spend five times as much to find out about, this is a great option. In your head, you're going to know that this is plastic, not sapphire. But in practice, you really won't be able to tell the difference. Anyway, that's the Omnion OM16 in a nutshell. As usual, let me know what you think about this one down below, as well as what do you think about a meteorite dial version. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I'm Shane, this is Relative Time, see you next time.